original creations. And the Terra that you see here um, is themed around the Roman uh, goddess Terra of Earth. There's one of them, Nation. Um, one of her skins in the game Smite is actually a pro wrestler themed skin and it looks a lot like this because it's meant to look like an 80s style female wrestler. But it was spelled T-A-R-A -A, the way that I spell it, which is why I kind of did my own rendition of that. <laughs> the one that just came into the match she is someone who's actually been away from wrestling in real life for a while now um, that crap dang it that sucked <laughs> I got to number I got through four or you know, to number five essentially so the thing that you have to watch in this game, which I, I kind of made the mistake on in this particular run, is that you have a limited number of counters, and I burnt through all of mine way too recklessly, which is why I didn't last very long. <laughs> but now I can kind of just talk for a little bit. Um, so the thing about Asuka is that she... She took time off because she needed some surgery. Um, uh, another wrestler was supposed to do a fake kick to the face and ended up accidentally, ki actually, actually kicking her in the face and knocking out at least one of her teeth. So she went to have some dental surgery done to fix it. And while taking the time off, she decided to Yeah, pretty much. Um, she uh, decided to take some time off and you know, have her doctor you know, just kind of look at some bumps and bruises that she had been experiencing and turned out she had like really messed up either her shoulder or her arm or something. Basically, she had to have surgery on her arm as well. So... <laughs> She's been gone for multiple months. I don't think it's been quite a year yet, but hopefully she'll be coming back soon because she's really good and very entertaining. I say that while she comes back and just treat it like a joke, which WB has a really bad habit of doing lately. I love pro wrestling and, and I have spent most of my life watching WWE programming, however, the company is, hasn't been going in a direction that I like for a while. <laughs> like, they can put out some really good content, and the wrestlers themselves are all very talented, but like, the, the company prices are, are pretty atrocious. Yeah, so I uh, I went to one WWE live event that was in um, well, for the sake of the internet, I will not name the actual city, but it was in a nearby city. Um, they came to town uh, back in like I mean they've been to town since, but this is back in 2014. I went, had pretty decent seats, and it was, it was fun. Um, I went to a live event last August, 
uh, a local independent group um, game, and I, I got to go watch them. I got in a little bit early, got to meet some of the wrestlers, um, and the, thing, the fun thing about independent wrestling is everybody is like it's it's very much like the uh, like the thing about the YouTube channel for Up Up Down Down you know, you know humanizing the wrestlers that you see on TV with independent wrestlers because they're on such a smaller stage you really can see that they're just they're just people. They're, I mean, they're trained to do what they're doing, and this is something that they love to do, and are passionate about. But aside from that, they're just people. And, and they're very... Everyone that I've got to, got to meet, they're, uh, very, they're very nice, very polite. Um, I got a picture with one of them, which I have... Uh, which I have in the frame. I've been wanting to go back and do more. They've been back to town since that show, but I just I haven't been able to go. They were very nice and approachable. Yeah. It's it's funny because so I wore a wrestling shirt, which I'm not wearing. I'm I'm wearing one of my shirts tonight. But I wore a wrestling shirt for for John Huber, um, the guy who used to play Blue Carpet who passed away. There was a, a T-shirt that I have of him. This says exalted in heaven and without getting too religious about it I thought that's a very a very sweet and a very touching shirt design so I, I bought one I was wearing one of those when I went to the local wrestling show back in August and uh, uh, the reason why it says why it says exalted in heaven is because his name for the last company they worked for was the exalted one Anyway, aside from that, I wore that t-shirt to the in, to the independent wrestling show in August, and one of the wrestlers, uh, actually a couple of the wrestlers, complimented me on it. They said, hey, I like your shirt. I'm like, cool, I like yours, can I buy one? <laughs> um, yeah, they were all really nice. Yeah. Um, one of, well... And some of them, being that some of the people that wrestled in that group were with, with, lived within, lived in, you know, Missouri or close to Missouri. Now you're good. There are times when I'm like that if I'm texting somebody. Um, I'll send just like okay or, or yeah. I'll send like very short answers. You probably noticed that in, in our personal text. I'll do that to let you know that I'm, I'm not ignoring you. But there are many times where, like I can't think of words or anything else to like extrapolate upon to go further. So I'm, I'm bad about that at times. So I'll be just, I'll, I just want to send something so you know, know that I'm, I'm, still, I'm still here and I still care. I just don't know what else to follow it up with. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is... So, if I'm able to, I'd like to go to more independent shows this year. We'll see. We'll, I'd like to see how, how things go. Um, I would like to, I'd like to do that. I would like to... A bucket list of mine 
would be to attend uh, a show for a company called AEW, which is another mainstream company like WWE. In fact, they're a major competitor for WWE now. Um, I would like to attend one of their shows because I think it'd be fun. They actually have a really good reputation for a company that hasn't been around that long. Um, well, <laughs> I say that, but the guy who runs AW, like, I'm, I've heard that he's a good guy for the most part. The one thing that he doesn't handle well is criticism, especially on social media. If someone, if someone points out a, a flaw of his or a fault of his on Twitter, he gets super defensive and it's like, dude, just take it with a grain of salt and you know, maybe look at what they're talking about. <laughs> um, if I had the money and the time to, to, to do it, I would go to a major WWE event this year because the actual Royal Rumble, which is this style of match plus the entire show, is being held in St. Louis. And I would love to go to go there and, and attend it live. So I've never been to a major WWE show, I've only been to the one live event of theirs. But yeah, money, exactly. Money and time. <laughs> and I say time because I don't currently have any PTO anymore because I used it to help my mom uh, move back from Florida. Which I don't regret. I'm, I'm happy I did it. Give me a chance to go out there, out to Florida one more time. Yeah. Kind of a drawback to my job is that, like, I, I'd have to look into it to see what the uh, requirements on. But as it currently stands, I get one week of PTO every year. I don't know, but that's just because I've used mine before finding out. I'm going to say probably not, just because as much as I value my job, it's not the best. There's a lot of benefits that are really not that great. some interesting people, that's for sure. <laughs> I deal with people that are... I, I have some great people that come into my store. I have some trash people that come into my store. And I have people that are just odd. <laughs> I've come to learn though that I sound like a like a so like a little man half the time whenever I talk about some people that come into my place. That's awesome.
I don't know why, well, I don't know why this is, but close to where I live, there is a coffee shop um, that's Australian food. I've only been and I'm able to try one of their snatches that they had. It was good, but that was also like a couple of years ago, <laughs> so I don't remember much else. Oh, anyway, like, you are mentioning that I, I probably sound like an old man the way I talk about some people that come into my store. Is that, let's say... Let's say someone comes in and is acting a bit out there. And so someone that I don't know, for example. My knee-jerk reaction is that it's just to assume that they're on drugs. It's, it's a common thing for me to say to, to the people I work with. Something to the effect of, this is why you don't do, this is why you don't do meth, people. Dance school kids, don't do drugs. <laughs> In your in your line of work, you you deal with the kids and, and with their parents. I I often find myself biting my tongue because I see a lot of parents who I don't know if it's because of the type of store that I work in or if it's just that in general that they don't care. They let the kid run wild, do whatever in this in the store. It's like why? Like, I have two things that go through my mind when I, I see half the parents that come into my store. I think, one, if I acted the way that your child is acting, my, my parents wouldn't have necessarily done anything, but my grandparents, who I spent most of my childhood with, could have hooked me. <laughs> like, my grandma... If, if I acted up as, as a child, if I acted up in, in a store with my grandmother, I would say that she would have found an empty out to, 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 to beat me in, but no, she would just put my ass no matter where it was. <laughs> See, that was my parents' way of doing things. My parents would just often grab me, and it's like, when I was younger, I had a lot more energy. And so, being told, "Hey, you get to you get to sit in your room on your bed for X amount of time," that would drive me nuts. <laughs> My, uh, uh, I learned pretty good with my grandma not to not to test the little old lady. She she was don't get me wrong. I love my grandmother. She was she was an awesome woman. But she also doesn't get perfect at anyone who's full of shit. Least of all from her grandson who should know better. <laughs> Which, ironically enough, um, now whenever I'm joking with people, um, sometimes I even post, even sometimes I even use this wording where I post stuff on, on my social media. Um, I'll use the phrase, if you act right, to talk about someone's behavior, like, uh, like, most recently, for example, um, I was going through posting pictures of these new rescues I've been trying, and, uh, Something came up to where I wasn't gonna, to where I wasn't cooking. I was just eating leftovers that you know, that night, and wasn't gonna cook or post pictures. And so I made a little post about something else, saying, saying that I wasn't posting any pictures, but I would post some, some more stuff the next day, 
if, if y'all act right, pretty much is what, I, is what the post said. Anyway. Part of, my, part of the dumb sense of humor I have, I guess. Um, yeah, my parents were more into the grounding stuff. Uh, I, I did not like, well, until I got to a certain age, I was not a fan of being told, you know, your grandma do is you just have to sit on your bed and, and chill until you can behave yourself. Not a fan of that. <laughs> then once I got to a certain age, I realized, wait a minute, you're telling me I could just take a nap? Cool. <laughs> As an adult, I kind of want to do that a lot, but I can't. I can't do that as much as I would like to. <laughs> Honestly, as you could probably guess from me streaming so late, I have a hard time sleeping as it is. So naps are naps are a weird thing for me, especially now. <laughs> description reminds me, my, one of the houses my mom used to live in when she lived up in Kansas City, um, she uh, had this house that had a basement, well, yeah, had this basement room, and it, it had a room that, that, the, that we jokingly called it the cave, because it was an interior room, there was no exterior windows, so actually there's no windows at all. There's no windows, there's only one door that went straight into a hallway. Like as soon as you opened it, you're like right at the wall, more or less. So you immediately have to turn left as soon as you open the door. Um, so no windows, no direct access to light. Um, and there's no ceiling fan. So the first time I stayed over at that house, uh, that's where I slept because it was basically like a guest room. Um, my stepdad used to use that room when he would work overnight because it would because he couldn't sleep with, it, with any light at all and that that room got pitch black um but the thing is i had to have i had to ask him for a little a stand up for a stand up fan because one i have to have a fan on whenever i sleep otherwise my sinuses get all jank up and i can't breathe the way i need to um but also uh, I needed the fan, not only just for that aspect to, to help me sleep, but also I needed the sound. Because without it, not only was it pitch black, it was like silence to the point to where you only heard your, the, the sound that your own, body, your own body was making. Like it was like si dead silent. Like, eerily quiet. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, which, I mean, if that's the type of thing that you need to help sleep, especially if you're having a hard time sleeping in the daytime, that's a great room for it. But I had to have a fan just so I'd have that break. Like, I could deal with the darkness, but just the total silence messed with me. <laughs> yeah. Which is funny because my mom was, you know, I remember the first time I stayed there, my mom was like, like, hey, do you want a fan or something? Like, uh, maybe, we'll see. I'm sure it'll be fine. She's like, it gets like really quiet and really dark down there. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'll, I'll figure it out. Hey everyone, 